Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to play another game and in this one I don't know if you've seen yesterday's game, but I spent all of my time in the opening and in the early middle game and then I had absolutely no time to, to play the rest of the game, so now I'm going to play quickly. We have a semi-slav and we are either going to have the Moscow or the anti-Moscow. We have the anti-Moscow and this is one of the sharpest openings in chess. Let me just check b before I start thinking if everything is okay with the video. Okay. Uh, so yeah, yesterday I wasted too much time and today I'm not going to be wasting too much time. Uh, in this position he has to play e4. He plays a4. Okay, this is a line Grandmaster Misho Cebalo played against me and I outplayed him and ended up offering a draw because I was sad. Uh, that's a long story, you can find the game on the channel. Uh, Bishop b4 is the move here, I think. Wait, is it? Why don't I remember this? He wants to play e4 next. Wait, is bishop b... Why don't I remember? This is this was three years ago. I haven't looked at this line for three years. Now I'm looking at... If I go bishop b4, he goes e4. Ah, then I can go g5. He cannot go e4. I go g5 and take on e4. Okay, so bishop b4 is the move here. He, I think he plays e3, and then I go b5, he goes knight d2 to unpin. I think that's the line. If e4, then g5, bishop g3, and takes on e4. Bishop c4 takes on c3. Yeah, I, I had to remember that. So yeah, e3, b5, and now knight d2 is what... Misho Tsebalo played against me. Maybe inserted this first, I, I don't remember. Bishop e2, I don't know. I think knight d2 is the move. Because now I can play bishop b7 and he doesn't have knight d2. Unless he castles first, and then I take on c3. Okay, so bishop b7, I think, is a good move here, preventing knight d2. I may also consider g5 and knight e4, now that he hasn't played knight d2. Is that a better way to punish him? No, because then he has knight d2, I have to take on c3, and he has bishop f3 in the end. So I'm gonna play bishop f bishop b7. I don't want to allow bishop f3. If he castles, I take... Can I even go a6 here? I'm not familiar with this position. Knight d2 has to be played instead of bishop e2. Can I go a6? a6, if he goes b3, I take. Queen b3, bishop c3. But if I take on c3, b c3 castles b3 takes bishop b5 okay a6 b3 takes queen takes bishop c3 queen c3 seems okay i'm gonna go a6 my rook is of course defended now And if a6, b3 takes, queen takes, bishop takes, queen takes, I'm not hanging bishop c4 because his queen is on c3. Okay, a6. 
I'm not sure if a6 or bishop c3 should be played here. Ideally, of course, I don't want to give up my bishop if I don't have to. If I can retreat this bishop to e7, then I like my position even better. He really should go b3 here. Rook c1 is imprecise, has to be. Rook c1 makes no sense, he had to play b3. Okay, I'm just gonna castle, get my king safe. Why didn't he play b3 sooner? Okay, takes. Now do I take on c3? Or do I play bishop e7? I may even play bishop d6, but I'm not sure about that. No, no, I don't want to give up my bishop pair if I don't have to. If I play bishop e7, he cannot play e4, which is good. Okay, bishop e7, what does he do? Knight e5. I can go knight bd7. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go bishop e7. I don't want to trade pieces if I don't have to. Especially, I don't want to give up my bishop pair if I don't have to. I could consider knight d5 to trade the dark squared bishops because his is better, definitely. Okay, knight bd7 seems okay here. He isn't threatening anything. Okay, uh, let's just develop my last piece. He doesn't have knight c6. He doesn't have knight f7. Okay, f4 I didn't expect. He's playing extremely quickly. But the question is... What does he do against knight d5? Knight d5, if bishop f3, I take on, on h4. Knight d5, if bishop e7, queen e7, bishop f3, I can play queen b6. No, I cannot because knight takes d7. Knight d5, bishop e7, do I go knight e7? I like that, to make sure he doesn't have bishop f3. Okay, I'm gonna play knight d5. Maybe I should play rook c8 first, but... This has a threat. So I'm gonna do that. And I think if he takes on e7, I take with the knight. And I have knight uh, f5 ideas as well. Again, I'm low on time, lower than my opponent. I'm trying to play quickly, but this, this guy is just blitzing his moves out. So, again, I'm five minutes down on the clock. I mean, he has a pawn hanging and a bishop hanging. So he has to react. E3 is a huge weakness. Yeah, okay, I was thinking I take on E7 with the knight. And I don't see why not. Because if I take with the queen and he plays... Ah, queen takes... Queen takes bishop f3, I have knight E5. But he could then play bishop D5. Okay, I'm taking with the knight. I don't want to trade pieces if I don't have to. 
And if bishop f3, then I can just stay. I mean, I can always go back. And if he plays knight e4, well, for now he cannot, but bishop f3, bishop f3, rook f3, then threatening knight e4. The d6 square is not as weak. Unless I take on e5, which I definitely am not going to do. If I take on e5, then knight e4, knight d6 is crushing. I mean, I have two connected passed pawns and an extra pawn. I don't think his opening went well. Okay, he wants to go into e4 with the knight. That much is clear. The bishops I have to trade off. Okay, rook e4. Now, he wants to play knight e4. How do I want to meet that? Uh, I think rook c8 first makes a lot of sense. On knight e4 I can then take on c1, so... Ah, does he have queen a3? If rook c8, does he have queen a3? He may have queen a3. Ah, no, he doesn't, because then I can play knight d5. Rook c8, queen a3, knight d5, and if queen a6, I play rook c3. And if rook c8, queen a3, knight d5, knight d5, rook c1, check, queen c1, e d5, seems okay. I don't mind having a pawn on, on, on d5. That's not so bad. So I'm going to go rook c8. I don't think queen a6 is... Uh, queen a3 is such a big deal. Of course, if he doesn't play queen a3, then I just go knight d5. I've prevented his main idea, I feel. Why would he want to trade pieces like that? I don't understand my opponent. I mean, if I take, he takes and then has knight d3, knight c5. But I have knight b6, knight c4. But if I don't take, he can just go back this way. I don't know if I should take or not. So takes, knight takes. Knight b6, knight d3. He's gonna get into c5. Regardless of what I do. Unless... I can trade off his e5 knight comfortably somehow. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take, takes, go knight b6 with the plan of queen to d5. Does he have queen a3 here? No, because I go knight a4. I don't want my knight hanging on d7. And the knight d3, I think queen d5 is good. Okay. I was thinking knight a4 here. Do I have a better move? I could just go... Okay, I'm going knight a4. I mean... I don't want to lose this pawn. Also, I'm controlling c5, so... 
this cannot be bad. The knight is on the edge of the board, but it's actually very useful, I think, supporting my pawns. Okay, now I have to defend my knight. So, knight d5 makes sense. And on knight c5, I could play queen a5. Yeah, okay, knight d5 makes sense. Preventing knight b4 and also getting my knight into play and my knight is now finally defended. And queen a5 could be annoying because I could have queen e1 check with queen e3. Okay, now if I go queen a5 and he takes... I take with the pawn, I think. I don't want to trade queens. <coughs> That's the issue. <coughs> <coughs> But if I take on c5, he takes with the pawn, and then he will have e4 at some point. So I don't want him to take with the pawn. Can I win this position with double a, a pawns? That's the question, I don't know. So takes, pawn takes, a5, e4, b4, queen a4, have knight f6. Okay, I'm going to take uh, because I don't think I can win this position with doubled a pawns. Oh, he takes with the queen. Okay, this is much easier now. I, he should have created a passed pawn, I feel. Now I think I can just safely trade queens. Because I'm threatening queen c1. Okay, I'm gonna go queen c8. I don't see why not. I have two connected passed pawns. If we trade queens, this endgame should be winning. If he goes queen a3, I can just go b4. If he goes knight c6, I think I go b4 anyway. Knight e6 threatening knight e7. Maybe just king h8 is good enough. But that undefends my rook, so I don't want to do that. Ah, so I should have played queen c7 instead of queen c8. No, if knight c6 I go queen c7 and he has to play e4 and then I play rook c8. Yeah, okay, I, I'm going to do this. Queen c7, if e4, rook c8 should be good. Because he doesn't have rook c3. Ah, no, rook c8 he takes. Huh. Hmm. Rook c8 he takes and he's defending the knight. So should I just take on f4?
or go knight f6. Knight f6, knight e7 check. I just blundered, I think. I did just blunder. He's threatening to win my queen. I didn't see that he wins my queen. I thought I had rook c8. Uh, again, I messed up a great position. Should have just gone king h8. What can I do? Can I get away from this somehow? Yeah, knight f4, he just plays knight e7 check. What am I thinking about? Oh, come on. He's playing instantly and crushing me. I don't have a move here. I don't know. I'm not going to resign because I don't want to resign. Uh, but I'm obviously lost. So I just missed this and he was playing instantly. And... Yeah, I I played quickly because I was low on time. This is this is obviously losing. I mean, but I will keep trying. I do have two pawns. Ugh. He's just destroying me. I don't even know what to do. I don't have any moves. I, I just got destroyed. I mean, he played an opening really poorly and then he started playing great. So he may be cheating. I, 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 I don't know. Usually when people cheat, they, they do stuff like that. It's weird that he's just playing instantly or almost instantly. I'm not saying he's cheating, but usually when Leeches gives me my points back, it's people who play poorly in the opening and then play really well quickly. And that feeling that someone may be cheating makes me anxious, so... Obviously that's my fault. <coughs> has nothing to do with my opponent, he probably isn't cheating, but... I don't know, I'm gonna take here because I don't see anything better. 
Obviously I'm threatening the rook now and threatening checkmate, so he has to be careful. I'm gonna start playing for... What am I missing? Ah, it's not mate. Okay, it's not mate. But I have counterplay now. I'm sorry about the dog. If I go rookie rookie eight, he goes ninety five. Oh, shut up. This dog has such an annoying bark, it's insane. I mean, at least I, I... No, I don't have a draw because he has queen f3. Okay, I'm gonna start with rook e8 because I'm low on time and this seems to be annoying for him. I think he plays knight e5 here. And then I was thinking b4 with the idea of check and check, but I don't have a check when there's a knight on e5. I'm really happy, unhappy about this game. I didn't see that that e4 wins the queen. I saw e4. That's the worst thing. I just didn't understand the implications of the move. I I feel better when I miss a move completely than when I see it and I don't understand what it does. After knight e5, he's actually threatening rook a8, which is a huge problem. So I think rook e8 was a mistake. And if he doesn't play knight e5, then, then I win, I think. Or, or definitely I have a draw, but I think I can also win. Unless he plays something like rook a1, then, then I should go for a perpetual. Okay, now I have a perpetual check. He should have played knight e5. Okay, let's gain some time on the clock. Mm. 
Maybe I'm winning, but I'm not sure. Obviously he has to play king f1. If he doesn't play king f1, then I have checkmate. So can I get him to put his king on the dark square somehow? If I don't see anything, I'm gonna go for a perpetual, but... I don't believe I drew this game, this is just... He plays knight e5 and beats me. I actually have a trick now with queen c3, I don't know if it works though. Queen c3 I'm threatening rook e1 check, winning the rook. And if he moves the rook from the first rank... Ah, queen c3, he has queen a2. Okay, so I let's get some more time on the clock. I don't see anything better. I, I don't see a win. Maybe there's a win, but I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I don't see a win. I, I don't... I don't know. Oh, shut up! Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's have a look at the game from here. Wait. Uh, okay, yeah, here, where he played bishop e2. Uh, let me just expand this. Uh, yeah, okay. So, obviously, in this position, black is already better, as you can see. This is not a good line. And as I said, knight d2 is the move. He played bishop e2. Which I've never seen before. Bishop b7, castles, a6 correct, rook c1, castles, b3 takes, takes. I played everything perfectly. <laughs> Knight bd7, f4. How how did I how did I lose a piece in this position? I'm minus four. Knight d5 takes takes. Rook c8 is a mistake, queen c7 is better, but rook c8 is still minus 3 almost. Okay, I should have taken on e5, I didn't want to take on e5. But okay, knight b6, here, here. I just blundered the game away in one move. Queen c7 just blunders the game away. Okay. That's understandable. Yeah, 95. And yeah, now it's a draw. There is no win. My opponent played too quickly. Ah! Queen c7 is such a bad ball. Queen d7, excuse me. Yeah, f5 makes a lot of sense. This is minus 4. I'm only a pawn up, but because of my past pawns. Yeah, now I just push. Yeah, this... I, I had a really good position, and then... As you saw, one move. This was just... I, again, I got away with, with a blunder. Hopefully I do better in the next game. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.